Hey, Smoke, where you at? What do you mean you're not coming back? But I was wanting to do the next Friday review with you. This was your idea. Yeah, but... But... Can I get a word in it, wise? This was your idea. You need to get your ass out of here right now. You know what? Fine, whatever. You're a freaking idiot. Well, looks like I'm doing this review solo, like always. Welcome to another Reputized video. Next Friday was directed by Steve Carr and stars Ice Cube, John Witherspoon, and newcomer Mike Epps. And it follows Craig who moves out of the hood and into the suburbs with his uncle and cousin because Debo, the neighborhood bully Craig dealt with, broke out of jail along with his brother to enact revenge. This one, it wasn't, I didn't feel it was strong as the first one. First one had heart. First one had Smokey. Like I said in my other review, Chris Tucker is who made Friday. And in this one, it just didn't feel the same. But it's not like I'm not going to talk positives at all. I do have some positive things about this. Okay, the character Dana, played by Mike Epps. At first, I couldn't quite get into him. This was his second film, I believe. Like the first two acts, I couldn't quite get into him. I don't know, maybe he was trying to find his zen as this character, but I couldn't quite get into his character at first. But by the third act, I pretty much fell out of my seat. And like the way Craig and him would collaborate, it really made me laugh. Well, go first. No. Go first. No, nigga, you go first. I'm not going first. By the time this movie ended, Mike Epps, he was, he was the man. He never, he does not compare to Chris Tucker. Not by far. But he is his own comedic tone for this character. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What you talking about? Come on. Wait, look. Wait, look. What? Come on, man. And you got John Witherspoon coming back to play Craig's dad, Willie. He was the same as he was in the first one, which is not, well, not necessarily bad. I feel five pounds like what? Jealous? <laughs> and then you got the main villain, the the Joker. That's what he's called, not the DC villain. <laughs> but he's just called Joker, and he's got two brothers and a really pretty sister. He was a bad guy, but his personality was like a cartoon. Not as silly as Chris Tucker was in the first one, but still, he was a bad guy, but at the same time, he was really nuts. I thought he was fairly funny. We locked the fucking door, huh? I don't like locked doors around here. They make me crazy and shit. I was locked up and said, pass the wire, pass the wire. I don't want no grilled cheese. Jacob Vargas brought that character to life, and I thought he did a pretty good job. Like I said, he's not a, nearly as good as Smokey was, as Chris Tucker was in the first one. But he comes a close second. And then you got this little dog, Chico, that the bad guys have. And they, they always have them attack them, attack Craig and Day Day and stuff. I thought that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> Christopher J. Boffa's cinematography and lighting was done pretty well. Because this was set in a different setting, it didn't look as urban-like. So it was lighter. It was... It, it was... It had more color to it. The first one, you knew that the movie was set where it was because of where it was. And the lighting and the cinematography for that really showed. But because Craig is in a different place, of course it's going to show on screen. So the cinematography and lighting played a heavy hand in that. The urban feel is there, but it's just not as strong. Now, Craig. It's going to be different living out here. Terrence Blunkhart's score was pretty good. It gave it that kind of com comedic feel, but at the same time, it was different. Because it had more of a score in this one than a soundtrack. And speaking of the soundtrack, it wasn't as good as the first one. The soundtrack for the first one was just awesome. This one, I think it just had one song that I liked, which was Ice Cube's song, Do It Like That. I believe that's the name of it. 
I, like, I really like that song, but the rest I couldn't really get into. Which slides me into the negative. I told you the premise about how Craig had to move out of the hood because of Debo's escape. And he knows that Debo is going to enact revenge for what he did to him at the end of the first one. I understand that, but I just felt like Debo's presence wasn't really necessary. It didn't really fit the tone of the film. I mean, like I said, I get that it's his revenge, but he didn't really do anything. The most he did was scare a dog. You stupid mutt. And jump in front of the car in front of Day Day and his dad when they were leaving at the beginning of the film. Hey, stop! Ah! Get to the park out of the car, Greg! This is the rematch! That's it. He doesn't really do that much. They didn't really give him that much to do in this. I just felt like his presence wasn't really needed. And like the context could have been there, but not literally, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, as I said before in passing, Chris Tucker, his absence was a downer. I felt like that if he would have been in this film, it would have been a hundred times better. The reason why he was absent in this film, Chris Tucker has become a born-again Christian after filming Money Talks back in 97. Not to get into any religion, but I do commend that. He stuck to what he believed. But because of that, we kind of lost a great comedic character. But instead, he decided to do the Rush Hour films, which I commend that. We still got a really great character out of those films. But still, it would have been really nice to see Smokey and Day Day's chemistry. It really would have been so much fun to see. I don't give a fuck. But unfortunately, that's not what we got, so it is what it is. But they mention in this film where he's been, where he actually is. I like that because of continuity-wise, I really do like the way that they incorporated that into this one. The jokes, it wasn't as strong. Like I said, I think Chris Tucker was the magic that made Friday. And I think that's mainly the reason why most of the jokes in this film fell flat. Now, I'm not saying that all of them fell flat. Just a huge majority of them did. But in the end, folks, it just did not live up to its original by far. It didn't spark that magic comedy ingredient that you really desired. That's why next Friday is getting a B-. minus. It's still watchable. It's still funny to a certain point, but compared to the first one, nah. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What do you think of next Friday? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. My review for Medea's family funeral should be up soon. And then a couple more, maybe, and then Friday after next. Hope y'all have a fantastic Friday and a great weekend. Peace, Rip.